Um, I'm, I'm Mario. And um, yeah, this is the thing that I wanted to talk um, to you about in the next, in the next couple of minutes here, um, which is basically called if Grails, Rails, and Node, Angular, whatever JS is the case, is the right um, approach to do um, business applications. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so this is actually, this is going to be my first talk ever. And <laughs> additionally, it is my first talk in English. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that and see how this works out. I think it's going to be a lot of fun either for uh, all of us or for you exclusively, depending on how this works, <laughs> how this works out. <coughs> okay, so this is, this is me. Um, I'm a software developer um, living in Germany. And um, yeah, I have a blog called Road to Cuba Beyond Dot and beyond.com, so which should give you a hint on what the topic um, of today is. And um, as well, I have a Twitter handle, so if you want to follow me, you can you can totally do that. Um, okay, so now when I when I came up with this um, with this talk and with the with the slides for it, I I thought, okay, so what what would be possible um, a possible path through through this thing and now. What would you um, prefer prefer to do? And we could either go um, like the business kind of a way through this presentation and see um, um, d view this this thing from from like a business kind of uh, view. Um, and what I would like you to do just to raise your hand. So if you have any um, preference about that one, so um, is there any anyone who think that the business way of life should be should be the way that we use the presentation for now? Okay. <laughs> okay, so and I think then then we have the technical one. So this is the the counterpart. Or is that okay? Okay. Um, okay. So I will tell you what we do. We what we do is we're gonna do um, the the business way of this talk, um, and it's actually this has yeah I I think three reasons. The first one is um, you know we are at a at a fairly technical comp um, conference here. And <coughs> the most talks I and uh, go in much more detail towards the technical side than um, I could personally ever do. So um, this is the first one, and I think additionally that is um, uh, worth considering to come a little bit out of your comfort zone and try to do uh, something something different here. And the second one is that I actually did not prepare the technical talk, so there's there's no way can we can do that. And um, yeah, so actually the whole point of this, this talk um, is, and this is a hard one for me because I'm a technical person um, as the most um, people as well here in the room, I think, um, that at the end of the day, um, the, the technical side of things does not always uh, that much matter as we might think it does. And so perhaps we, um, yeah, we'll just, we will just stick to that. <coughs> okay, so first of all, I would like um, to give you a little bit of context when I what, what I mean when I talk about business applications and I um, just um, downloaded a few a few pictures here from from stuff that I'm thinking of when I when I see business applications what you see here is um, a, a, a really gigantic form with different categories and um, picker fields and option groups and whatever have you and um, there's a guy called uh, Scott Hanselman. I don't know if anyone is familiar with this. He's in the .NET, .NET world, and he always talks about forms over data. And this is um, pretty much what it what it boils down to here. <coughs> and then you have some kind of metadata on the side, and you have some kind of actions that you can do on these data. <coughs> yeah. Um, okay. So then, then I have another another slide, and this is um, uh, this is kind of funny. I actually I exported this this PDF files from from Google Drive where I, where I created the, um, this thing, and every image got into this PDF file except for this one. And <laughs> um, I am uh, what I actually wanted to show you here is um, the thing that are most uh, that most people are familiar with when they doing this uh, when when, when they are dealing with business applications. This is data grids. Yeah, like tables with um, stuff you can sort and you can filter and whatever. The most boring thing in life that you can ever imagine. And I'm not, I'm not sure why, why, this, why this image is not m processed. I'm, uh, per perhaps Google has some opinion on that. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, so 
whatever we have so you know so you get probably you get the point here we have the next we have the next one which is kind of similar and here we see the data grid <coughs> and this is actually um, um, a thing that is um, on top of Grails, which is called great CRM system or something like this um, this is kind of interesting and what uh, um, this is created from from Buran, um, from Sweden um, I think he announced it two years ago or something like this and you know ba basically it has the same the same kind of things um, detail information for data sets then it has data grids and it has um, formula based uh, information um, retrieval <coughs> okay so this j just to give you ju just to give you the context here and then what I wrote down here is um, some kind of uh, business application requirements that are pretty common in this um, in this in these scenarios and first of all there's this this data grid thing which is basically you know this it e doesn't even need any any particular um, more information about that it's just it stands on its own um, so you so you're able to to display data in, in table form and have the possibility to filter on this data to group this data whatever um, whatever you can imagine on on this one um, then you have something like like filtering um, where um, you can you can filter this data not precisely on the on any certain certain attributes of the data but more in a generic way so if you have you know if you have orders and this order has an order date then it's probably um, likely that you want to filter by um, a range of dates or something and um, more than that additionally the, the it should be possible to, to filter on associations for example like then you have a list of orders and you want to see only all the orders from one particular um, customer that is related to the order then you are um, yeah then you are in this whole association um, thing this is kind kind of common and um, yeah then then we have the next thing uh, which um, which is security and um, yeah I think it's not it's not the kind of security that that a technical guy would would, would think of and when seeing security something like you know cross-site scripting or TLS or any any of this fancy stuff it's more like the business way of, of security which means you know you have a role-based authorization system or there you have an admin and you have users and you have managers and whatever whatever um, distinctions you have there <coughs> and then what is quite common is um, when you look at the data grid then we have um, rows and columns and normally what um, what end up happening is that um, on both of these dimensions um, security should be applied so you one thing that you might have is that you only want to filter um, on the row based level if you say okay so for example um, when you have the list of orders then you are you as a um, um, as a user of this application are only allowed to see orders that are from a customer within a certain area or something like this so instead of seeing all um, the orders you you will just see um, a few a few of them <coughs> yeah and then then we could we could do this on the column side as well so you um, say okay so this this person who logs in, in into the system is only allowed to uh, see um, um, a subset of the data but not in terms of the rows but more in terms of the attributes so like um, the I'm only allowed to see the 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 user um, I'm, I'm sorry the the customer's username and the the, um, the person the last name but not the credit card number or something like this <coughs> so yeah this is this is quite um, this is quite common and then you have stuff like reporting which you can do like on the fly or um, if you have some kind of templating mechanism um, this this is another um, another um, interesting thing okay so this this was just um, uh, just to give you um, yeah as I said a, a quick context on on what is um, it's all about um, coming back to the original title um, which is called if um, grails is or you know um, parse the regex and put your your whatever you have into this thing um, what I what I come up with here is um, some kind of a um, solution space and problem space diagram where you have a situation at um, the gray the gray area here is 
um, all the stuff that your framework can do. Um, for example, when we take Rails an, as an example, then we have something like, it, yeah, the, the bottom line of it is pretty much, you know, you can do web-based um, applications with more or less relational databases in the back end. Okay, so this is, this is the context in which we, which, we, um, um, which we act. And then there are certain problems that, that fit into the solution space um, that are normally a little bit smaller. So for example, you can you know, do a responsive marketing site that just prints out HTML. <coughs> Probably uh, Rails is not the, the best fit for that, but it's definitely doable. Um, then you have stuff like um, end customer facing applications where you have um, uh, requir um, certain requirements towards um, specific user interfaces that are um, a little bit um, yeah, more responsive than the average business application, for example. <coughs> or you could do online shops or REST backends. Um, or you could do business crud like applications, right? And um, yes, yeah, so. <coughs> When I, when I first started programming, I was doing um, a lot of PHP development, and um, I worked in a company where we had the situation that we actually wanted to solve, solve certain problems that have been solved before with um, Excel sheets or with access databases or something like this. And um, we came up with this um, uh, you know, PHP thing, which was a little bit more um, customizable and all this stuff. <coughs> and what uh, what stuck with me um, the whole time was there is a lot of stuff that keeps um, coming up over and over again, like um, doing all this CRUD um, stuff for the for the master data that you have to put in your system, or whatever that might be the case. And um <coughs> yeah, I will I will just come back to this um, story in a minute. Um, for now, um, yeah, what I Okay, so what I created here is some kind of categorization of um, different approaches to, um, um, to, to categorize different frameworks into this um, general purpose domain specific um, spectrum here. And when, uh, when we look at something like Rails or you know, whatever the equivalent here is, um, then they are only uh, from, okay, so let's say from, from, uh, from a serverless point of view, um, Grails is pretty domain specific because it is only, um, you, you have certain opinions into, baked into the system that um, allows you to go faster, but also um, restricts the possibilities which, what you can do. And um, <coughs> yeah, and when we go down to the, t uh, up to the top here and say, okay, so we are in this content management space, then probably something like um, a WordPress or a type of three or whatever the case, um, or whatever the, the current um, framework there is, might be a good fit. And um, what what happens here is that it um, there are some some verticals here that um, um, differentiate the different um, categories of, of software. Basically, it's boi it is something that we see when we have this blue um, uh, this uh, this blue areas here. <coughs> and um, you know, when I was doing my my, um, my PHP development, I was always um, asking myself, okay, so is there anything that is, um, yeah, let's say it's a little bit, it's a little bit more convenient for for uh, developing business applications. And then I um, was introduced to Ruby on Rails. I think it's two, 2006 or something. And you know, when I first created my crea uh, Rails new project and then um, did the scaffolding kind of a thing, it was I was totally blown away by that because it basically um, said, okay, so everything you, you do the last three years with doing all the CRUD masks just goes away. Um, and um, that, that was pretty exciting. And, and on, on, on the Grail side, this is, this is true as well. Um, but nevertheless, they always said when, when you go through these tutorials, they always said, okay, so um, these, these scaffolding thing, this is just like, a ju like junk food. Okay, so you can, you can have it in the first place and then um, you, will, you will not stick to this because it doesn't really apply to any real scenario here. 
And <coughs> this is, uh, it has always been the, the case that, that um, the scaffolding thing was, um, yeah, in, in some way it was like, you know, trying that out and have a, have a quick result but not use it in, in production because it is not um, that, um, that common. And I always thought why, why this is the case because, because I, I personally, um, it felt like it was pretty close to what I wanted to go. And um, <coughs> um, and so so the question that I had in mind is is there anything um, is there anything between these this um, this top top level stuff like um, using an uh, using an SAP, SAP installation for for your business applications or a WordPress kind of a thing when you do um, content management and this um, in this sense, fairly low-level implementations like Spring MVC or something like this. I, I always felt that the, this gap between these two world worlds, uh, worlds were pretty, um, pretty high. And what I imagined, or, or what, what I think is the, the, um, the reason for that, and I will go back to this slide here, is that um, the solution space does not really match the problem space or the, the problem that you have at hand. So when you look at it, the, the ratio between um, the stuff that you can do with Grails and the, the problem that you actually have <coughs> um, is like one to 10 or one to 20 or whatever the case is. And um, um, I'm sorry, what, what I, what I wanted to, to admit here is that I think it is valuable to think about shrinking down the solution space to, um, to a better match between the problem space that you have and the, and the solution that, <coughs> that you will use for, for solving this problem. And um, yeah, I, I came across this, this tweet a while ago and this is Dan Woods and he, uh, he said, Okay, so platforms come in all shapes and sizes with varying degrees of opinion. The more opinionated, the more you can focus on code and not on the infrastructure. And um, I find, I found this um, fits very well to what, what I wanted to say here. Although it turns out that he did not at all talk about Grails or any, any um, uh, web development stuff, but um, he talks about uh, this Docker thing and um, the relationship between Docker and some upper level concepts like, um, like a platform as a service. <coughs> but nevertheless, he said, okay, so the more opinionated, the more you can focus on code and not on infrastructure. And this is, this is basically um, the, same, the same idea here because um, coming to Grails or coming to Ruby on Rails or whatever you choose there, um, or at least for me, it was, um, this was the reason why I came to it in the first place. Well, because <coughs> the opinions that they have um, on, on solving certain problems and choosing different subparts of a framework um, um, just let, uh, let me go a little bit, fur uh, a little bit faster. And um, there is actually no, oftentimes there is no need to choose all of these um, different pieces by yourself. <coughs> Yeah, and this is, uh, yeah, I just, I just wrote this one down. Um, what happens when you shrink down your solution space is basically, as, as Dan said, you can focus more on, on the problem at hand um, and you will get a productivity boost, a dramatic one. Um, and this, is, uh, this has two reasons. The first one is that, that scaffolding, and this is the thing because I, I um, a few minutes ago I talked about that, because, um, because th the scaffolding thing basically becomes now part of the solution because it is not um, so much, um, okay, so in Grails they only can go that far with the scaffolding thing be because it does not really, it does not really make sense to go any further, like for example, create a fancy UI that is um, you where you can select um, association data or something because um, this would only apply to a very little degree of the problems that you can solve with Grails. <coughs> and so um, when, when we shrink down our, solu our solution space and get this productivity boost, this comes because of scaffolding becomes a real thing. And another, another thing is that, um, that you can use off-the-shelf solutions that are um, 
gonna fit um, in, yeah, the, the, the likelihood that it fits to your problem is, uh, is much higher. <coughs> and we will, we will see two examples of this um, in, in the demo. Um, yeah, okay, so. And then the next thing, which is, um, which is kind of what, what grails this uh, and, and all the other um, frameworks um, that you don't need to, um, to choose. This is a very powerful thing when anyone, um, you can s just stick to the conventions or stick to the opinions that, that um, the framework has. And um, you, it just, um, okay, so when you, when you want to do a business application, then it probably does not matter if you're using Jackson for, uh, Jackson for, the, for the rest um, uh, parsing stuff or you, you whatever, whatever, um, um, whatever your li library you use. So it it's just um, nice to see that this just goes out of the um, out of the room, and you have um, any anyone has um, picked this from for you. <coughs> <coughs> okay, and so. Um, the next the next 20 minutes, I think um, this is going to be the the demo, where um, this is a thing I stumbled upon like in the last year or so. This is a framework um, called Kuva Platform, and um, what these guys did is exactly um, this shrinking down the solution space. Okay, so instead of saying okay, so we're gonna solve um, all web application uh, problems that you can imagine. What they did is they said, okay, so with this software, you can e pretty easily build um, business applications, web-based business applications. And due to this, they were uh, able to, um, to come up with solutions and scaffolding mechanisms that um, fit uh, for, the, for the problem business applications quite well. <coughs> okay, so um, what I what I did is here to you know just create some kind of order management system, and this is what we um, are gonna gonna do in the next in the next minutes here. Actually, I created um, a few of these um, of these entities in advance, so you just have to have to see this one. <coughs> um, yeah. Okay. So technically, this is just another Java framework, right? Okay, so this is, uh, it uses JPA, it uses, um, I think it's Vardin for the, for the UI layer, it uses Spring for dependency injection, and what they, uh, what they put on top of that are different um, things that are unique to business applications, and we can have a look at this one. <coughs> okay, so I already created um, this three entities here called customers, product categories, and products. And when we have a look at, what I basically did is saying, okay, so I have this product class and it has the attributes, let's have a look, um, name, description, and category. <coughs> and the scaffolding thing that comes out of this looks like, looks like this. Um, so first of all, you get a data grid, which is a good, si uh, good thing. And then you can you know, create, create data and, um, and edit the data. <coughs> and when we have a look at um, the different fields here, uh, so the first thing, you know, is obvious is a string, the next one is a string as well. Um, the interesting part comes here with the category, because it knows that there is a many-to-one relationship between a product and a product category. So what it does is, um, they, they call it a picker field, so you can have um, a look at um, all product categories that are uh, that are there, and you can just um, select one. <coughs> okay, and yeah, just just doing the normal the normal CRUD stuff. Um, okay, so this is the first the first thing of, of scaffolding that I wanted to show you, and then we have um, a thing, which is part of these of the shelf solutions that start to fit in these cases. Um, which is this filter pane here um, at the at the top, and um, when we have a look at it, we can add search conditions, 
<coughs> and these search conditions, uh, basically it looks at this, um, at this entity, in this case it is the, the product, and looks what attributes are there and what uh, associations are, are in, the, in place. And we can do something like, so I want to uh, filter on the name of the, of the product, like say of all um, the, the Nokia, Starts with all the Nokia handies here, <coughs> and yeah, this is th this is obviously an, an easy one. And then we have something like where you want to select based on association. Okay, so you can say okay, so I want to filter on the category, and as it knows that this is an association, you can select um, the corresponding uh, um, the corresponding category that you want to filter here. Um, you can even draw uh, drill down in within this um, association filter on attributes of, of, this, um, of this instance. When you want to do a little bit more, you can create your own stuff where it's basically, you know, some kind of a DSL to, to write um, a SQL query. So you can imagine of, of that, you can join different classes here and say, <coughs> um, uh, um, define filter criteria. And um, yeah, this is this is the first thing of the of the shell solution. In Grails, there's actually um, a thing that is quite similar to this approach, which is a plugin called Filter Pane, and which basically does the same thing. But it, um, yeah, I think this one is a little bit more um, a little bit more advanced in this case. <coughs> okay, so then what we um, do now is that uh, we want to fill the application with our two uh, missing entities here. And we could actually do this in IntelliJ. This is no, no, no deal to do that. <coughs> but what they, what they, um, these guys from, from um, Kuba platform all also did is to create a, some kind of rapid application development tool that you can put beside your, your normal IDE. Um, and that does a little bit more things for you. And I'll just um, stick to this for now. Okay, so the first one is that we want to create line items. <coughs> um, when we have a look at the uh, the UML diagram here, we see, okay, so um, we have line item class and the order has a composition of line items. Okay, so then we will um, create a line item and what we'll do here is to create some kind of um, attributes for this for this class and let's say we have a position attribute and then we have a relationship to a product <coughs> and in this case this is not a data type but instead it is an association and what the studio thing here does for me is that it looks up the all the associations that are possible in this um, scenario and uh, in this case I want to use the the product one and then I can specify the um, uh, cardinality to this, in this case is it um, many to one. Um, so basically this is, you know, just um, just JPA stuff, but in a fairly fancy way, I would say. Okay, so let's make this one mandatory. <coughs> and then we have something like a price, so. And we'll save this. And what I will do now is to create a view that I'm not gonna um, talk about what this concept is for now. But nevertheless, we will just we will just go for for the order class and um, define this class. And this in this case, we want to um, have a relationship to a customer. This is an association. Like like the one before. Um, <coughs> okay, so then the next thing that we probably want to have is an order date. Yeah. Okay. Let's say let's make this mandatory. And um, what we then have is um, the actual reference. We will just hold this up here. Um, the the reference to the line items class. And in this case. Um, the the order doesn't okay so the line item does not need to exist without an order right Bec and because of this we will not choose um, 
an, an association, but instead we will use a composition. <coughs> okay, so something there. And if you're familiar with um, JPA, there is this thing that you have to, um, in this case, have a, in the, the line items class, have a attribute that points to the, to the order. And this is what um, happens here that he said, okay, so let's, let's create an inverse attribute on this, um, on this uh, line item class. Okay, so we'll <coughs> just stick to this and create this class. And what we'll do now is create another year. Okay, so at this point we are ready to, um, to create our screens. Um, and we will start with the line item stuff here. And there is a concept of a browser and a concept of an editor, which is basically um, yeah, some, some kind of an index method in Grails. And so this basically this is just the data grid and this is just the, the edit, um, the edit um, screen for, for the, the entity. In the case of the line items, we don't want the we don't want the browser, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. <coughs> and we'll have different options here to, to create this uh, this thing. And um, what hap ends up happening is that we have an XML definition of um, of uh, this view. And as the view layer is is Vardin, there is actually no need to um, to abstract this framework away. But what they did is um, that you're actually allowed to not only create web applications, but um, you can as well um, generate uh, desktop applications from this, which are based on Spring, uh, um, on, on Swing, I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah, so this is just uh, the XML definition of this, um, of this view. We will have a look at it right now. Um, but before, we will just create the order screens. And in this case, we want to have the browser and the, uh, the editor as well. And what is kind of interesting is um, when we have a look at this order edit definition here, what we see here is that not only the attributes um, that are directly related to this um, order class are uh, defined in at the top, but as well as we choose a composition for the line items thing, um, it created a, um, some kind of an inline table to just view and create um, the line items for this um, for this current order. Okay. <coughs> so with this, we should be ready to to restart the application. And as he recognizes that there are changes in the entity model, uh, this will reflect the the database changes. Actually, these are just a bunch of SQL files that gets um, like um, the equivalent in Grails world is the the database change log kind of a thing. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so when we just reload this um, this application here, then we should probably see um, uh, an order menu entry. <coughs> and yeah, there we go. Okay, and what we can do here is yeah, create orders. In this case, we will you know just use um, and custom here, create a date. And what we can do here is to create line items. And these line items are um, automatically associated to this order. In this case, we will. <coughs> Let me create another one. Okay, so now um, just save that, and now I have a running order in case. Um, okay, so in the last few minutes, I would like to show you another um, off-the-shelf solution that is quite appealing um, with uh, with this platform, which is um, the security mechanisms that they have built in. So when we have a look at this um, administration thing here, we have um, a lot of different options. And one of them is that we can create access groups and we can um, manage users. And this is what we, what we are going to do now. And I will just um, create 
um, an access group in order to um, uh, to restrict the access what I called earlier the role uh, the role based authorization mechanism so we will just um, we, we, will we will create a user that only is allowed to see this is sub part of the um, of the system um, in this case let's say um, I have a I have a customer called Witte, so let's let's make this one happen here. <coughs> and what you can do when these um, access groups is that you can add constraints, and these constraints um, are used throughout the whole system when data is retrieved from the database or through the through the um, um, corresponding services that, that that handle that. And we will create a uh, um, a constraint for the entity customer and what we um, what we do now is okay so e is the the current entity that we are um, s have selected here and then you can say okay so I want to be the name like okay Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is that we create a, a user and um, add this to uh, this access group. And there is a, some kind of orthogonal um, approach um, regarding the, the roles. Um, and I will not go into details for now, but you can uh, um, ask me later if you want to. Okay, and we'll just stick to this. And when I log in <coughs> as this user, I don't see anything because I wrote um, the constraint wrong. I guess it's So I'm just able to see a sub part of this, um, of this, um, of this application, and as you may have noted, um, as you may have seen, there is the possibility to um, to do some kind of uh, join here. So I could actually say, okay, so the the user Mario is not only allowed to see the customers called Witte, but it's only allowed to see the orders that are the, uh, that are associated with the with the customer where the name is uh, is Witte. <coughs> yeah, okay, so this with this, um, I will leave it for now, and we can just um, just um, recap a little bit what we what we've seen here. So yeah, the benefits basically are, as I al as I um, said already, you can you can more focus on business problems. Um, and you know this Kuba platform thing is just an example for this, right? I mean you can um, when you want to do content management and you want to create blog posts and then you are probably in a better situation when starting with WordPress like starting with socket programming, right? And so this is what it ends up um, happening here is that I can more focus a little bit more on the on the business problems. And yeah, there's no not much need to choose. Like, um, okay, so if in case that this filter stuff matches your your needs, then you're ready to go out of the box. And if it doesn't um, match, then um, obviously you have the possibility to dig down into the system and change it. But um, so the point here is that um, by selecting the um, the solution space in a way that it fits, then there is not much of a need to do so <coughs> yeah and as we as we um, saw I think this um, created uh, a, a productivity boost that is um, definitely notable okay and so um, then just add the natural thing here is that um, obviously when you when you shrink down the the um, stuff that you that you can talk to you also um, shrink down the ecosystem that relates to this technology, right? So, I mean, <coughs> obviously there, there there are not ma that many people in these and these uh, littler frameworks than there are in the in the more general um, frameworks. 
And another thing here that is um, worth mentioning is that it is harder to switch to another problem space. So if you um, choose your technology and it turns out that you actually don't want a business application but you want to do an online shop, then um, um, with this technology that you choose in the first place, it is a little bit harder to, to, um, to use this, this stuff. Okay, yeah, with this. Okay, so um, yeah, I, when, I, when I first um, submitted the talk, um, I, I thought to myself, okay, so what a shitty title. Because, you know, so uh, the, p the point here is what is, what is right? I mean, there, there's, no, there's, no real, um, there's no real value here. It depends on the context, right? But, and I, I actually, I don't want to, um, you know, do, do bashing on Grails here in any, in any kind. I personally use it um, on, um, on a lot of projects and uh, at work as well. So um, basically, um, what, it, what it boils down to is this thing that um, it depends on the context you are that you are living in. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to have uh, more information about this stuff, then I created a few bit.ly links here where I go um, in my blog in, in much more into detail um, regarding this um, um, thing for the filter stuff or for about the security stuff um, or how to make this um, work with Groovy as well. Yeah, so with this, I would like to, to close this. And if there are any, any questions, then we can have another five minutes or so. No questions? This is good. Okay. Ah, I'm sorry. Um, no, 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 no. The, the point is not that it is not fit, but the point is that there might be possibilities that fit better. Yeah, well, okay, so let's, uh, let's use this example of the, of, um, the picker field, right? So you have an association between uh, um, two classes and the association um, will get um, uh, recognized from the system and select the different um, uh, input types here. And <coughs> so from, I think from Grail's point of view, there is not much need to, to go much more into this scaffolding thing because when you do an online shop with Grails, then there is no real need to to, to, to create these crud masks um, in 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 this way, and so yeah. So I I, I, I s yeah. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, in general, I think this is true. I mean, th with with the, the with the shrinking down the solution space, you obviously um, um, you you buy productivity and you lose flexibility. This is the point. And um, this is a trade-off everyone has to, to make on, on the self. Um, but it depends a little bit on, on the implementations of these abstraction layers. And um, for, for Kuba, at least, I, um, when we have, uh, if I get your question correctly, um, that you want to um, see data outside of this application. Okay, so um, we, can, we can use this as an example. What they do is that um, they create there's a thing called a portal, and this is just another war file where you have basically just a few uh, Spring MBC controllers, and you can do whatever you want to do with that. 
And another thing is that um, they not only create user interfaces for these entities, but they create a REST-like JSON API for all the entities by default. So you have just um, the possibility to, to go with your Angular application and just um, um, authenticate against this, against this application. But in general, I think this is, this is right. I mean, so yeah, as I said, when, when, when um, choosing uh, a small niche, then you get the productivity and lose the, the flexibility in general. Okay, so no other questions, then I would say good for now. Thank you. <laughs>